Economics is boring. This is a lie we've been told all our lives, but accept it or not, our life depends on it. War, poverty, revolution, they all hinge on economics, which itself rests on one key concept, money. The ultimate catalyst for the worst and the best of human endeavor. Like it or not, money defines our social status. It also compromises our morals sometimes. Some people spend their lives chasing these rectangular pieces of paper. Some are willing to fight, even kill for it. But are we headed towards the end of money as we know it? Will we have to burn our rupees, dollars and euros? Transform every single penny we have into digital binaries, or should I say, to cryptocurrency? Is it really the new goal, the future of money, or is it gambling, a recipe for financial disaster? If these are questions you've been asking yourselves, I have a story to share. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. What the internet did for information, digital currency is doing for money. It is revolutionizing transactions and eliminating banking. Not a week goes by when cryptocurrencies do not dominate the news. There are record-breaking price surges every other day. Your colleagues won't stop talking about it. Your friends want you to invest. What do you do? You weigh the pros and cons. Understand where you're putting your money, and that's where the problem lies. Most of us do not understand money and its handling. It's a life skill we were not taught in school, beyond the basic computing. Now, if money changes form, the first thing you try to do is understand it, and that's what we'll do today. And if you're worried that we are going to get too technical, do not. It's all plain English. Let's start with understanding three basic concepts. Bitcoin, blockchain, and cryptocurrency. What do they mean? Here are some quick definitions. First, Bitcoin. It is the name of the best known cryptocurrency. Like the euro is the name of one type of currency, Bitcoin is digital and decentralized. It exists electronically. It's a computer code only. And I'll explain in a bit. For now, the second definition, cryptocurrency. It is a medium of exchange for Bitcoin, just as notes and coins are for rupees and dollars. Crypto means data encryption. It basically ensures the security of transactions. Now, you may have heard about your messages being encrypted. It means they're secure. It's the same for crypto. It's encrypted data. But unlike debit and credit cards, cryptocurrency has no physical counterpart. It's the only form it exists in. The third definition is blockchain. It is the technology that enables the existence of cryptocurrencies. Think of it like a computer file that stores data. But this is a file across a vast network of computers, and it's not exclusive to Bitcoin and crypto. Blockchain has many, many uses. This is just one of them. So simply put, this is everything we don't understand about money combined with everything we don't understand about technology. Now, don't lose your head if you do not get it, because most people don't, and surveys have shown this. Only one out of 10 people understand how cryptocurrencies work. And one in three cryptocurrency investors themselves know little to nothing about it. Take Bitcoin, for instance. No one even knows who created it. It has been in circulation since 2009, but the identity of its creator or creators remains a mystery to this day. Over the years, many people have claimed to be or have been called Nakamoto. But there's still no clarity. Whether it's one person or a group of people, no one really knows. That I have nothing to do with Bitcoin, yeah. nothing to do with developing. Um, I was just an engineer doing something else. What Nakamoto did, though, was solve a potential flaw in digital banking, double spending. Now, what's that? Let me explain through an example. If a person buys a sandwich worth $10, for instance, they cannot spend that same $10 bill anywhere else. But when the same amount is paid digitally, some people can manipulate systems and spend the same $10 more than once. And that, in simple words, is double spending. To stop this from happening, you have banks and credit card companies acting as middlemen. So they vouch for the transactions that you make and they prove that you've already paid for something. At the same time, they take their own cut off the transactions you make. Enter Bitcoin. It solves both these fiddly problems. Like I said, it is decentralized, meaning there is no third party controlling it. Instead, it is regulated by its own community of users. 
and all of them record all of their transactions at the same time. Any attempts to fool the Bitcoin community will ideally get noticed and the payment will get rejected. No single user or government or bank or credit card company can force a fee on your payment or control its flow. Plus, Bitcoin is said to be secure from the effects of currency debasement and inflation. Does sound perfect, doesn't it? Well, it isn't. Bitcoin is not without problems. The transactions are irreversible. Once you've paid, you've paid. You will not get a penny back. Plus, it's extremely volatile. The value keeps fluctuating. On the 14th of April, it was worth 63,000 US dollars, one Bitcoin. On the 23rd of April, it sank below $50,000. Why does this happen? You see, like everything else, the price of Bitcoin is driven by demand and supply. When the demand increases, the prices go up. When people see the price going up, they feel like cashing in. So they try to sell their own Bitcoin. And this leads to more people wanting to sell. But sometimes there are not enough buyers. So they lower their price. And on it goes like a roller coaster ride. So fluctuation is problem number one. The second problem has to do with security. The digital wallets containing Bitcoin are stored in phones and computers. And we all know how vulnerable these are to theft and hackers. In 2016, a Los Angeles hospital ended up spending 17,000 US dollars on illegal transactions after hackers took control of its computers for more than a week. So if you have a good amount of money invested in Bitcoin, create passwords that are difficult to guess. Also, stop visiting those weird and suspicious websites. The same rules apply for every other cryptocurrency, which brings us to the question, how many are there? 4,000 plus. There are more than 4,000 cryptocurrencies in the world. Why do so many of them exist? Because why not? The key software to create a crypto is open source, which basically means anyone and everyone can create them. So there's Litecoin, Namecoin, Peercoin, Gridcoin, Ripple, Primecoin, Ardor, Mazacoin, Stellar, and this, Dogecoin, a cryptocurrency that started off as a meme. It has now become mainstream. In 2013, two software engineers used the image of a dog and made this cryptocurrency as a joke. Their aim was to make fun of how people would invest in anything. And guess what? People did just that. On the 20th of April, Dogecoin's market capitalization surged to more than $50 billion. It ended up being worth more than Ford and Marriott. All thanks to Dogecoin supporters who used hashtags and social media posts to fuel its price. And this episode is both laughable and fascinating. It tells you about the times we're living in, where online campaigns can have a surprisingly big impact on the market price of anything. An age where parody can be turned into a real asset. Dogecoin is worth $50 billion because people believe it is worth $50 billion. You know what they said about the power of what you believe in? Perhaps this was it. It's the same in the case of Bitcoin. The fundamental reason it has value is because people agree it has value. Think of it like these shoes with human blood. They're worth $1,000. Why? Because its manufacturer thought someone would pay $1,000 for such shoes. Who, by the way, was absolutely right because all of these shoes have been sold out. What does this tell you? That a vast majority of people investing in cryptocurrency are just responding to the craze around it. They're giving it a shot. What about governments? These countries recognize cryptocurrency. The UK is working on something called Britcoin. Russia does not recognize cryptocurrency. China cracked down on it, but then it shifted position. Now Beijing calls it alternative investment. In India, cryptocurrency is not legal tender, but there are people who invest in it because people around them do it. The bottom line is this. The future of currency is digital. There is no doubt about it. But when you invest, you must know that you're not just investing, you're also gambling. And if you're ready to gamble, you must also be prepared to win or lose.